Day seven of the project. Really should be knocking some stuff out today. The week nights, it's great to get a little bit done then, but what I really cherish are these full days that I have to stay focused on the project all day. So all I gotta do is feed myself <laughs> and uh, I can stay focused on what I'm doing. So a quick update on the steering box. I found some gasket paper online last night that I think will work for me. There's some paper on the way to try and recreate this little paper gasket. That's cool. I'll tear into this front end. That means taking the brakes off, seeing if I can free up the other end of that tie rod over there. It doesn't look too bad. I should be able to free that up. I've got new tie rod ends on the way, but I do want to use the tie rods themselves. So those are going to get cleaned up and, and painted. Uh, I don't think I'll be using this box. I like how things are going with that other box, the actually the original box to this car as I know it. This is a, a beam that I got in the swap meter or something. So I'm going to use this beam, these tie rods, the pitman arm. I'm going to use these trailing arms. I don't think the originals were bent. These came with this beam, which I trust, so I'm going to trust these trailing arms here. That means I'll have to pop out these ball joints. I've got new ball joints to go in. That's going to be kind of a thing. That requires a, a pretty hefty press. I've done it once before, and I remember it being pretty exciting, so <laughs> we'll get to do that with these trailing arms. I found backing plates from the uh, that were original to the car. I will probably store these as spares and use my old backing plates. The thing is, is this is starting to become a budget project. The nature of this project, really for the first time in 20 years, is, is really changing here. It's a little bit more serious about getting it done and not an endless project. I kind of need to, to knock this out. I have to do it now. The beauty of that is it gets me on the road and this will be a living project. This thing will never be done. The idea is to be using it and tinkering with it and making parts of it better. That's really my aim now. I mean, I'll put it in car shows, sure, but that's not its intent. It's to drive the thing. I'd like to fix it up so I could wear it out. That's kind of the approach that I've taken to the RV as well. Just do all the work on it, get it working, get it reliable and functional and wear the thing out. <laughs> so I want to do the same thing with this car and that means uh, just getting it on the road, just making it happen. Today feels like a big day, so I'm going to get started. It's two hours later and I keep finding stuff that I need to learn more about. Parts of parts, stuff that I think I'm missing and need to go find in a parts box somewhere. I've got the exploded diagrams out. It's looking for individual pieces that I've yet to identify or find and making sure that I have them hunting and gathering hunting and gathering running down these rabbit holes of finding uh, parts that I'm missing or identifying a part that I found or, or whatever this is interesting this is going to be a very involved process putting all this together as if that wasn't already obvious but that's how it's affected by morning hopefully by the end of the day I've got a pile of parts that I know everything I need to know about and they're ready for paint so I'm just gonna keep at it I think I'm gonna to try and straighten this one out a little bit. So I'm making good on the feeding myself part. Yeah, some smoked salmon today. Why not, right? Here's a little bit of a hang up. I need to get this ignition cylinder out of here and it's one of those locky dealies. Starting in, you guessed it, 1968, the model year of my car. It requires the key. I looked all over and found these, which I think were what was in it when I got this swap meet special here, but neither one of them work. I got the trusty Samba up right now. This is why we follow up on these things. I would have probably caused a lot of damage trying to get this thing out. These are the kind of decisions that need to be made now and they need to be made well informed. Let's put this one in the stare at it forever and realize how simple it is file. Here's my issue. Need to get this entire assembly out. What I've been staring at is this entire assembly. It looks like there's a pin down here that locks onto the steering column, the steering lock as it would be. And it seems like that pin has to go in to pull this out. Well, that's not so. I don't know if you can see it, but the very front here is a little bit beveled and this is angled. After staring at it for long enough, I realized you can just push it from behind and it comes out like that. Oh boy. Still need to figure out how to get the cylinder out. This is all pretty crusty. Looks like something melted at some point. This little hole here goes to a spring clip. That's the ticket for removing the cylinder. Yeah. So check that out. It's possible to do this without the key. 
great. Got that stuff sussed out. I do need an ignition switch. So I've got my steering column stuff in that box. I got my steering gear stuff here, the steering column hardware that goes with the steering dampener, steering shaft in the column, a Z bar. Also have the grommet kit for it. I should probably take these guys off. I, I don't have, I don't think. Oh no, I do, okay. Long time ago, I got the mounting kit for the sway bar. Right now, I'm actually doing some wire brushing. This is where I'm doing some real paint prep. This is wire brushing bolts. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these uh, lug bolts. I'll put a fresh coat of paint on the tops of these as well. I'm gonna be able to end the day with something to show for it, which would be great. One. I looked up the measurements and the wear limits for the drums, and these are just inside those wear limits. I'll go ahead and uh, take these bearings out and clean them up and replace the seals uh, and I'll go go with that. I went ahead and sanded them down a little bit just to get some of the surface rust off and it feels nice and smooth. Everything else is going to be new or totally refurbished. I've got new hardware for the brakes. I got new wheel cylinders, new hard lines, new rubber lines, all springs and these adjusters. I'm going to take the backing plates off and, and sandblast and paint them so so all of this will be fresh and new. I am sticking with drums, mainly because I've got so many of those parts. Maybe someday, instead of getting the new brake drums, I'll get a conversion kit, but I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna see how the brakes work. As I understand it, they're, they're adequate as long as you keep up with them, and that's kind of my thing. Continuing on. Day seven was the most productive so far. The beam almost completely disassembled. Tomorrow, first thing, I'll pull these torsion bars out of there, clean everything up, degrease the beam, and it should be ready to go. I've already done everything else on the beam, chased some threads and paired some bolts and so on. I do have one problem. This is the backing plate for uh, the driver's side. There's supposed to be a little clippy clip on the top here. In fact, one that looks a lot like this but it's missing uh, they break off they're actually available but I'd have to get one and then weld it in place which isn't a big deal except for the time that it would take to wait on the part to arrive so since I have these other two backing plates you pick the one that I like best and use that instead there were a couple of hurdles today popping the ball joints out of the trailing arms that was kind of a question mark this time around I think I got it figured out a little bit better the press work went pretty smoothly and, and quick and there wasn't any part of it that felt like it was going to go shooting across the garage. The rule is with a press is that it's 90 degrees. 89 degrees is a no-go. 90 degrees, okay. Well, I've got a good collection of parts over here ready to be sandblasted tomorrow. Hopefully before the end of the day I'll be able to uh, wash it, uh, etch it with phosphoric acid and then rinse it all off and get it dried so that on Monday I can have a big paint session. POR 15, at least two coats, and a dust coat of primer. I use Rust-Oleum a lot. It's kind of a soft paint. The benefit of Rust-Oleum is that it's easy to use and it's widely available. Touch-ups are a no-brainer. So we'll see how it all goes. It works best if I have a full day to do 
both coats of POR15 and a dust coat. I kind of like the preparation day and the paint day to be consecutive so that there's less chance of the prepared metal getting contaminated. So I'd really like to knock this out on Monday. But anyway, decent day, got a lot done and it didn't kill me to do it. So I gotta be satisfied with this. Uh, more tomorrow. If you're enjoying the series and know someone who may like it too, be sure to share a link to this video or its playlist. See the links below. Next time we'll do a little sandblasting, but until then, keep working on your projects and we'll see you on the road. Bye now.